Hello class, welcome again to the online pathology session. Uh, I'm going to give you uh, a two-part series on type 3, type 4, and type 3, type 4 hypersensitivity reaction as well as the amyloidosis slides. So the first session we are going to talk about uh, slide 117 which is the fibrinoid necrosis of the vascular wall. 154, which is membranous glomerulonephritis. Uh, we go to the type 4 slide 63, that is psoriasis. Uh, 105, that is Crohn's disease. And 109 for ulcerative colitis. Okay, so let us start. Okay, our first slide is slide 117, which is fibrinoid necrosis of the vascular wall. So in the type 3, which is the immune complex mediated hypersensitivity reaction, uh, the most the, the principal morphologic manifestation of this type would be acute vasculitis. So in this particular slide we would appreciate the presence of vasculitis. So this is the uh, this I think this is the aorta or uh, a large vessel, large artery, uh, there would be the presence of fibrinoid necrosis on the intimal portion or the tunica intima. When you say fibrinoid necrosis, it is characterized by having a smudgy, asymmetric appearance of the necrotic area. And it would be accompanied by presence of neutrophils. So you would see a lot of neutrophils in the slide. Not only in the uh, in the tunica intima that would show the presence of fibrinoid necrosis, but also in the lower portions, okay? in the tunica media, and even in the tunica anguish. Okay. So where do we see this one? We can appreciate this with uh, those with. Uh, vasculitis like polyarthritis nodosa, those with cutaneous vasculitis, uh, and in other forms of vasculitis. Next, we have slide 154. This is membranous glomerulonephritis. Again, we will look into the different uh, different components of a lingual tissue. We have the glomerulus, the tubules, the stroma which is called the interstitium, and we have the blood vessels. So in membranous glomerulonephritis slide 154, we have to look in the classes for lupus nephritis. There are six classes. We have the minimal mesangial, we have the mesangial proliferative, okay, which uh, in mesangial proliferative you would see the presence of mesangial deposits. Uh, then we have class 3 which is focal lupus and then we have class 4 which is diffuse lupus. Both of them would present with subendothelial deposits. Uh, class Five would be membranous, which is what we have in the picture. This would show sub-epithelial deposit. And then the last is the advanced sclerosing lupus nephritis. So for that topic, you have to go back to your book for further reading. So in this particular slide, we are going to center on... Uh, we have to center on this particular component of the renal tissue, which is, so this would be the, uh, this would be the glomerulus. So just a basic review, we have to look into the different types of cells that would be uh, seen in the glomerulus. Number one, we have the epithelial cell. Where do we see them? We would see them lining the Bowman's capsule. So these are the visceral epithelial cells. And then we have the parietal epithelial cells that would 
uh, that would line the surfaces of the tops of capillaries. And then we have the mesangial cells, which are seen at the matrix. And then lastly, we have the endothelial cells, which would line the endothelial surfaces, of course, the, the capillaries. So, in type, uh, in class 5, what we see would be the presence of immune complexes found at the sub-epithelial portion. So, again, we go back to where do we see the, sub the, the epithelium. So, it's located outside of the tops of the capillaries. So, we have to look at the capillary lumen and then we look at the capillaries. Usually, we would see thickening of the capillary walls. Okay? And then next is you look at the capillary, capillary lumen if they are uh, uh, occluded or not, or they are still patent. In subendothelial deposits, usually there would be the obliteration of the patency of the lumen. But in subepithelial deposits, the patency of the lumen is retained or preserved. So you have the, the thickening of the capillary lumen, but you still see the patency, uh, uh, thicken, thickening of the capillary wall, but patency of the lumen. So this is a feature for in subepithelial uh, immune complex deposition. Okay. So next we have slide 63. We, not, we are now with type 4 uh, hypersensitivity reaction, also known as a cell-mediated hypersensitivity sensitivity reaction. So slide 63 is psoriasis. We are going to look for uh, we are going to look for the features pertaining to psoriasis. So what is cell-mediated immunity? So it means that there would be the presence of a T-cell activation, a T-cell response. So in psoriasis, we will take note that there are sensitized T-helper cells, particularly the Th1 and Th17, as well as the CD8, and they would then be infiltrating into the skin or in the dermis and epidermis. Okay. Grossly, our patients would present with pink to salmon or salmon colored plaques noted in the skin. So they can be seen at the nape area, at the lines of the, uh, uh, the hair lines, at the elbows, at the, uh, at the buttocks, or at the knee. So what we would see histologically would be the presence of number one, acanthosis. So when you see acanthosis, there will be epithelial proliferation or hyperplasia. So there would be an increase in the number of cells uh, in the stratum spinosum. Uh, the other layer or the other stratum, the stratum granulosum, would be thin out this portion. And then the stratum corneum would show parakeratosis. When you say parakeratosis, there will be an increase in keratinization in, in this area, uh, but there will be retention of the nuclei. So there will be presence of intense keratinization of the cells, but there will be retention of the nuclei of the cells. Okay. So next we have the inflammation. So the type of inflammation that we have here is cell-mediated. It means that these are T cells uh, or lymphocytes that would be infiltrating into the dermis as well as into the epidermis. Okay. Uh, we can see the presence of neutrophils also. So we can see the presence of neutrophils. Uh, within the epidermis, in some portions of the epidermis, if you see aggregates found within the epidermis, you would call it as moonrose moon rose microabscesses, M-U-N-R-O. You also would identify the presence of mitotic figures, 
because of the increase in the turnover of cells. So, I'm going to let you see another mitotic figure that I have saw a while ago. Here, this one is a mitotic figure. And then we also have another one in this portion. So, you can expect to see a lot of uh, mitotic figures in this particular uh, vision. Okay, so this is psoriasis. Next we have uh, the inflammatory bowel diseases. We have slide 105 and 109, which would be the Crohn's disease for 105. 109 would be uh, ulcerative colitis. So let's start with the Crohn's disease. So Crohn's disease is an autoimmune disorder that is related to affected genes. Okay? So those who have a susceptibility gene NOD2, uh, we have the ATG16LI and IFRGN. But the, uh, the gene that is related most often with Crohn's would be the NOD2 or NOD2. So what are the, uh, the cells that would most likely contribute to its pathogenesis would be the T-helper 17, okay? And if you're going to look at the slide, you would see the presence of transmural inflammation. Notice there would be inflammation present on the surface, on the lamina propria, in the mucosa, in the muscularis area, in the submucosa. And in the muscularis, and lastly, would be in the portion of the uh, serosa. So, the inflammation here would be transmural, transmural inflammation. You would also appreciate the presence of fissures. This is a linear fissure, okay? It's an ulcer uh, that, would, uh, that would extend up to the mucosa, up to the submucosa, and sometimes into the muscularis propria. Okay? So the inflammatory cells here, they are mononuclear type. So that's why it's falling under the cell mediated immunity. And sometimes you would see the presence of non cascading granulomas. Okay? So we look at one of the aggregates of the lymphos, lymphoids, uh, lymphoid cells and then you look at the high power magnification to see the presence of epithelial histocytes. Okay. So again, just for, uh, uh, just for a review in Crohn's disease, it is NOD. NOD. Two gene related. We have the presence of fissures, linear fissures. The inflammation is transmural. Okay? So extending from the mucosa, muscularis, submucosa, and serosa. And the presence of non cascading granulomas. Okay. Next we have slide 109. This is ulcerative, ulcerative colitis. Uh, in ulcerative colitis, we would see the presence of extensive mucosal and submucosal inflammation. Okay? Extensive submucosal and mucosal inflammation. But there would be minimal or there's no inflammatory cell present in the muscularis. Okay? So again, Submucosal mucosal inflammation would be noted in ulcerative colitis, but in, uh, in the muscularis externa, it is minimal to nil or absent. So there's also the presence of pseudopolypoid formation because of the extensive inflammation. So uh, there would be pseudopolypoid formation consisting of the mucosa and submucosa. Let's look at the high power magnification. We would also see inflammation of the Crips 
or the intestinal glands. This would be uh, a segmenter, segmenter, if you would see the presence of inflammatory cells within the uh, within the gland, okay, but not the lumen. We call it as the crypt abscess, a cryptitis. Okay? But if you would see the presence of inflammatory cells, found within the gland lumen, okay, like this one, you call this as crypt abscess. Again, if it's cryptitis, it's limited to the epithelial cell, to the to the columnar cells. But if it's uh, if the inflammatory cells would be located within the lumen, you call it as crypt abscess. Okay, class, so that is the part one. I'm going to give you the part two later. Okay, stay safe and good night.